Here are 10 real reasons why so many Asian parents force their children to play the piano. I know you are wondering. Andrew, I don't want you to do rock music. Definitely not rap music. I want you to play Hungarian Rhapsody. No more gang gang, more like Lang Lang. Let's ah. run the clips. Steven, Uncle Roger coming soon. Make sure you play the piano um, for him. I, I don't play the piano, Dad. But the piano sitting there for nine years, why you don't well, play? I, I never... Oh yeah, hold on, let me just activate my Asian power again. Press one key. Look, you can press one, you can press 20. Same thing there. That doesn't make any sense. I can't just... This is a gigantic stereotype, truth, whatever you want to say it on the internet. There's memes about it, Asians playing the piano and violin. But today we're focusing more on the piano. Listen, guys, countless stories amongst Asian. You know, everybody knows an Asian American who played the piano uh, pretty competitively growing up. I feel like most people do, and especially amongst other certain communities. But I will tell you this, guys, that a lot of people have asked this question on the internet, and we're here to break it down and unpack it. That's what we do on this channel, unpacking Asian America. So hopefully you find this list video interesting because we researched it. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Smala Sosa, Smala Sosa .com. Andrew, look at the winners from the Geneva International Music Convention. This looks like when America beat China at the math competition but all the people on the American math team were still Asian. Oh my goodness, guys. I mean, uh, let's just say, before we get into the list, David, that the piano, <laughs> like playing a classical instrument in the household for traditional Asian families is literally synonymous with like studying and getting good grades, usually. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's hand in hand. Right, you're saying math, science, Musical instrument. Yeah. yeah. But specifically a string instrument. Obviously, the piano has uh, tuning strings yeah, below yeah. the wood. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about why the certain string instruments are considered more classy. But anyways, guys, uh, let's get into the list, and then we got our own takeaways and interesting theories. But point number one, the belief of learning the piano to a high level would make you smarter and lead to upward mobility. Think about it. When you think about piano recitals, you're wearing a suit, you're dressing up. It's a kind of an upper middle class thing to do. Plus piano lessons uh, cost money. So of course you think as an Asian parent, they're like, well, if they play the guitar, maybe they only want to get with the girls and go into drugs and smoke cigarettes. But oh, they, if, if they, they do the rap, they will... Get a gun! Yeah, but if they learn the piano, they will ace the SAT. No, if they play the A sharp, they will get A+. plus. Yeah. No, of course, yeah. And obviously, there has been some research to back it up that, you know, learning uh, complex, reading complex sheet music and being able to play it with IQ and things like that. Point number two, Andrew, everybody knows the child in a successful family that was really good at the piano and they wanted, went on to become an investment banker, a surgeon, something really good in the Asian world. Right, and this is community peer pressure because listen, a lot of immigrant parents are just trying to figure it out. Whether or not they're into classical music, they just saw someone at the church or someone in the community who had a very smart kid and they were learning the piano. And of course, in great competitive Asian nature, the parents are like, yeah, well, maybe it's good. Hey, you know, the Chang's kid is doing it, so maybe you learn it too, you know? If they can do it, why can't you, huh? Right, right, right. Asian parents, especially when they immigrate to a country, they're trying to, I guess, bring their bloodline or their 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 family up, and that's, like, one of the most, uh, I guess, conventional patterns of thinking. Right, and also, again, like, not all parents know what to do, so they're just taking clues from other families. He Point became a top-level engineer, and he is so good at playing Mozart. There's a connection. Point number three, even if you hate practicing the piano, it's still good for you. That's going to be the argument that a lot of Asian parents are going to say because like, even if you hate it, it's still making you smarter. It's still better for cognitive ability. It's still better for practice. It still puts you around other people. So even if you hate it, it's still good for you. It's like eating vegetables. Right. You're saying that Asian parents, they know that not, even if they have like three different kids, they know not all of them has the potential to be a uh, prodigy. Yeah, David, listen, David, you know, when we said we wanted you to play, we wanted you to play the piano, not play basketball. Uh, point number four, 
It's good for college applications or so it used to be. Obviously, uh, putting it down on your college application, I feel like in past decades um, about how you were a piano champion or you had uh, you played at a certain recital or you played at a certain You got auditorium. a solo at Benaroyal Hall or whatever hall is famous oh my in gosh, your I mean, that's so metropolitan area. Yeah, obviously, if you're a piano prodigy, I still think putting that on your college application still helps today, but... If you're not a prodigy, it could be seen as typical and actually hurt you. So at a time, being a piano, competitive piano player was seen by the colleges as an, as, as something that they want. Uh, interestingly enough, Andrew, so many Asian straight-A students with piano accolades came through the filtration system at Ivy League schools. They started docking Asians for fitting too much into the cookie cutter mold. Exactly, exactly. And also, like, if these parents are from China, Korea, or Japan, um, basically, like, the piano was just seen as just, like, something that only smart kids did. Uh, point number five, uh, simply having a piano in the household was just a flex. I mean, guys, if you guys know anything about the standing pianos or the grand pianos, obviously grand pianos can reach up to $100,000 depending on the brand and the quality. But I mean, David, in our house, we had a piano kind of like this one. No, we had the uh, lowest end Yamaha. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, and that was the standing piano. I mean, I, I'd say this is the most affordable one. A lot of people had this in their house or some older version, maybe a borrowed version. But anyways, having a piano in the house just meant like, you were a classy family. Like, you were headed... Yeah, it it, it kind of showed just, like, where your parents' head was at. Yeah. Um, point number six, it's just good for learning discipline and work ethic, right? You know, like, uh, just slogging through, trying to learn something, like looking through music sheets or going to class. You know, it's all just practice. So, of course, this goes along with studying. Essentially, the I think the idea is that if you can study music... You can study out of the book. You can study biology. You can study math, right? Right, right, right. You are basically honing in, locking in on something that can be very tedious, very repetitive, uh, a lot of hardcore memorization, and you're just going to slog through it whether you like it or not, and that's going to be a good, I guess, discipline muscle to carry you through uh, another discipline once you put the piano down. Yeah. Point number seven, piano recitals are also a flex, not just having the piano, but performing in front of a crowd, having your parents there clap for you, see mm. you bow, see you dressed up, see you do the the little thing. No, thing. dress up like a little Frenchman from like 1785 <laughs> or something like that. That's like a lot of like old school Asian parents dream because if you guys know when like the West made contact with Asia, which was more like the 1700s, the way Germany and Paris was popping, it just like put that like Mozart Beethoven image in everybody's mind and it like hasn't really changed whereas in America we're more like downward assimilating now and more into I, crazier I mean, stuff. listen David traditionally how else is an Asian immigrant kid going to be performing in in front of a crowd of non-Asians and wowing them with their talent like before like sports like what sport is that right okay. you know if they're saying? Filipino they could be boy though yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but like there's not a lot of b-boy competitions, but I'm saying yeah. to make other parents jealous. Yeah, and not only that, it. it's individualistic. For example, even if you're going to play a wind instrument, uh, like for example, brass, right, in the band, that those typically sound the best when they're harmonizing together with a bunch of other people, so it's not as focused on the individual. That's a good point. That's a good point. Piano recitals are individualistic. And of no. course, when it comes to like just honing that individual skill, I think Asians are so good at it because they're like, don't worry about right. anybody else. You don't have to no. rely on some lagging, slow if, teammate. If you just are the most, you. the most typical Asian is probably going to do violin, piano, and swim. Because swimming is also gymnastics. Uh, gymnastics, but it, it depends, obviously, if, uh, you know, which... Gymnastics is like a raw. Yeah, sport, man, I, I got a feel for those single childs who just learn the piano by themselves. You know, that's like a very, I guess, uh, lonely childhood. But anyways, point number eight: learning a classical instrument will make you smarter. We kind of touched on this, but uh, this is there's actually been a lot of studies that it supposedly helps your cognitive ability. I don't want to say learning the drums doesn't help because I'm not going to speak on this as like a non scientist. But obviously, learning the piano and the soothing sounds and everything, people generally. I, obviously, people are like, oh, listen to the piano while you study. It makes you study better. So, of course, there's that kind of correlation. Uh, point number nine, your parents preferred classical music, David. Now, this is a point that I want to talk about it because I think some parents, depending on the age and the generation, they were exposed a little bit more to Western pop music in Asia. But I will tell you this. For example, our parents, they weren't really into pop music. Our dad prefers to bump classical music in the car. 
yeah, like Beethoven, uh, Tchaikovsky, whatever you want to say, uh, different uh, conductors with their orchestras and not even like Trans-Siberian Orchestra either, like some old school stuff right, from right. like the 1800s. I would say this, man, it depends. It's different because like, even amongst the three big East Asians, Chinese put the most focus on hyper-classical stuff from the 1800s. Mm -hmm. If you look at Japan and Korea, they have, over time, gotten more into jazz. Yeah. And that's why, like, uh, even stuff like the RPG, like uh, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy music coming out of Japan and things like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's like I mean, just that we don't even need to get into this, but, like, of course, China's the most old school. Coaching of it course. from the 1800s. I yeah. think Chinese people love the classical arts on a mass scale the most. Like population percentage wise, I think they like it the most. Yeah, they're like, oh, no, because this is for even the older. Why would I study the jazz when that was from the 1930s? I will study from 1830s or yeah. 1730s. Yeah, I mean, obviously, guys, we've talked about it in a lot of videos. It seems like Japanese and Korean culture, they've kind of picked up on the more trendy, cooler Western things. Well, a lot it faster seems like Chinese. they've hybrided it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, point number 10, it's just something that is respectable that they know Asians can be good at. Like if your parents are even thinking about sports, for example, and they're like, let's say your parents are the type to want you to play a sport. And they're like, okay, which sports can my kid actually be the best at? They're probably thinking golf or tennis primarily right if they're not you know not basketball or football well basketball. Is it, is it, to be fair and i never was into golf or tennis or even the piano i failed at the piano i only liked that one song hiawatha our parents bought the piano for you mostly. yeah 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 hiawatha sounds the most like a hip-hop beat if you guys know about intro to i would say this man it's like just old school asian parents they just don't have any belief that unless it's like a weight class sport that the Asian kids have any chance. Right. <laughs> right. Like, so yeah. this is, like I said, music is now a performance art form that you can get respect for that requires no athleticism. Right. So I, I don't want to say zero athleticism. It's good. Like, you know, finger like coordination, but essentially you don't have to be tall. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be aggressive to be good at the piano and perform for people. That's why people right, like right. it. Well, this, by the way, this is not my saying there is a, I'm going to keep it real. Andrew. There's an old saying in China that black people are really good at stuff involving the body white people are really good at social things or like it's like leadership things but asians have no choice but to be good th at the mind things that's a saying in china all right anyways but, but i'm just pointing that out to say like obviously if we're raised by people from the east and if that is a commonly held belief in the east then obviously that's going to transfer over to the way the kids are raised and the systems and the ecosystems that they're grooves they're placed into exactly guys point number 11 was actually an interesting point that i came across um that playing the piano doesn't sound too harsh on your ears even if you're not that good so this is this is something that's kind of interesting where it's like, you know when like a baby smashes the piano keys? Yeah, it can. It doesn't sound like a great song, but because it's not like some type of electric guitar or even the trumpet. I remember, David, the one instrument that I tried to play growing up back in, what, fifth grade was the trumpet. And when you suck at the trumpet, it sounds terrible to the point where it's so annoying. Mom made me practice in the garage. And that's partially why I quit the trumpet. Also, I didn't have a passion for it. But if you got to practice in the shack or your backyard for your instrument because it gets so annoying when you're trying to learn, then that's obviously like it's an annoying instrument. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, I would just say that the piano is a cool instrument in the sense that, yeah, like you said, like. There's nothing really harsh coming out of it. No, it's soothing. Everything's rounded. I mean, if you guys look at the way the piano's tuned, it's like this little softened velvet thing, like, bam. It goes ding, ding, ding. You can just hit it real lightly and slow, and it just kind of does something, the vibrations, and it's good right. for your emotions. By the way, guys, this video, it's not necessarily just because you're Asian, this fits your parents, but it's highly likely that your cousin or a cousin's cousin totally fits into right. this video right everybody like our parents didn't push the piano that hard but we've all dabbled in it at yeah. least i mean i know some people who got forced to play the piano for hours a day also we have a little cousin who's really in the piano but he chose the jazz piano route um 
Here's my last reason. One reason that your parents did not force you to play the piano for was to become a professional full-time pianist or woo the ladies. That was not the reason why they taught you the piano. Uh, you know, you're saying Lang Lang doesn't have a bunch of groupies? No, no, no. I think Lang Lang has some groupies now because he's one of the top Asian pianists in the world, but I'm saying that's not why your parents signed you up for the piano, was not to impress the ladies or the men and the boys, right. and it was not necessarily to become a professional full-time pianist. I would agree. And it's interesting, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like the piano, to me, it's almost like this, uh, I, I guess it is kind of masculine, because most of the famous pianists in world history, maybe 90% of them or 80% of them are male, but then nowadays, it's almost viewed as very like hoity toity, right? Mm. Like high class, like up, upper aristocratic almost. Yeah. Like. I mean, uh, you know, uh, everybody let me know what you think about my list. Uh, are there any points that we forgot to mention, but hopefully this sheds some light on why that stereotype exists. I guess, David, what do you think? Uh, the piano, should Asians still tell their kid to it, learn a classical instrument or is everything so EDM now? I think that a lot of the EDM DJs and all the people who can really program beats all knew, knew the piano growing up. Mm. But I think the hardest thing about being an Asian kid, specifically an Chinese kid from an academic family, is you're going to learn the most old school 1800s version of the piano and everything you're playing is outdated. And even if you get exposed to Western music, maybe it's just like Billy Joel or something like that. And it's just like maybe some... Um, Ray Charles or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like just something with a little bit more soul. That's my opinion. Of course, you know, you guys are going to have your own opinion, but it's just like, I think that there's got to be, people got to transition it into more modern skills too. But right. Why? And that's what like Japanese and Koreans are doing with the more of the modern jazz, jazz turned into lo-fi, Shingo too. You know what I mean? New Jibis. It's like all, but David, it, those are all like modern iterations of it more classical skill set but i think like for example like chinese they just stay in the classical uh cultural sphere they don't take those skill sets and expand it's almost like when miri benari started taking the violin she's a classically trained israeli violinist and then started doing hip-hop with it but like David. i guess what i'm saying is that for me i'm just thinking about the hybrid approach who is going to upkeep the 17th century european aristocrat music culture though Asians got to well, do it, well, right? It will be the Chinese, for yeah. sure. No, no, no. You say right Moon, now, that's, that's you say Moonlight Sonata doesn't hit the same way anymore after the hundred thousandth time you heard it? Hey, man, listen, guys. I don't know. I mean, so, dude, hey, for listen, me, everybody no. is going to be raised for, how they're going to be raised. And so much of our lives is a function. And, and is that cool in this context? Are you cool but, to yourself? I don't know. For me, uh, I guess my... Uh, Compromises that I like piano covers of songs. <laughs> I bumped. I got. I got a whole playlist on Spotify where it's just piano covers of Andrew, beats. Andrew, you and David are so degenerate, yeah. falling into the American Western yeah, 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 rap yeah, man, rock yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are whatever. Whoever person that would leave that comment, you're right. You're absolutely. I right. I preemptively left sure, it sure. for that comment. All right. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Did you have to learn the piano growing up? Are you Asian? Maybe you're not even Asian, but like. Does this all make sense? There's so many reasons why your parents did it. I'm uh, not to give them a break, but uh, you know, some people were forced against their will. Some people loved it. That's good for them. But uh, either way, if you had to learn it one way or the other, I hope it helped you in life. So anyways, guys, that is 10 reasons why so many Asian parents force their kids to learn the piano, unpacking Asian America. I, I think sometimes like Asians in a way, and it's like, we can get into this later, but it's like they uphold old European culture a lot more than even Americans of European descent do. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.